guys. Have you ever wondered what it would be like to be the main character in Subnautica, Riley Robinson? Have you ever imagined yourself exploring the vast world of Subnautica and surviving against all odds? I can say for certain I have. In this video, we will be looking into how realistic Subnautica is and what it would be like in real life. Alright, for the first one we're going to be looking into breathing equipment or regulators. All scuba divers breathe with regulators. They're essentially devices that control the air pressure you breathe in and allow you to breathe out without accidentally breathing in water. I'm going to assume that Riley has one of these as well, even though you don't really see it in Subnautica, but you do see it in this picture, however. So unless you want to die, this device has to stay in your mouth at all times. It can be kind of annoying and uncomfortable, so in real life, that aspect would just make Subnautica annoying and somewhat uncomfortable. Okay, for the next one, let's talk about oxygen tanks. When you service in Subnautica, your oxygen tank automatically refills. Fact check, that ain't possible. Sorry. In real life, you need a diving air compressor that compresses clean air into your scuba tank so you can breathe underwater. This takes a long time to fill up. So this part isn't realistic, but without an automatically refilling oxygen tank, Subnautica wouldn't be fun. You'd go a certain depth, and then you'd have to painfully refill your tank, which would take a really long time. Also in real life, the tanks hold a lot more oxygen than they do in Subnautica. Like an hour's worth. So you'd think, in the future, the oxygen tanks would hold hours worth of air, not minutes worth. So that isn't very realistic either. But I guess Altera could have developed an automatically refilling tank. It just would seem easier to have a tank that held more air than to have an automatically refilling one. So in real life, the oxygen tanks wouldn't be possible at all, and the tanks would probably hold a lot more oxygen than they do in Subnautica. Next, let's look at depth and pressure. In Subnautica, to complete the game, you go down really deep. Going down 1,000 meters in real life would probably kill you. The pressure would crush you, as well as 1,000 other things. So Riley must have some insane Altera suit that's virtually invincible. There are so many other complications with diving deep. If you go down too deep and immediately come back up, you'd probably get decompression sickness, which is commonly known as the bends. It would probably kill you. Essentially, when you go down, gas dissolves into your blood and other tissues, so if you came up too fast, it can hurt you or even kill you. This means you can only be underwater at a certain depth for a certain time. Otherwise, you'll get the bends. This means you also have to have very controlled descents and go up and down very slowly. There are also other illnesses as well. For example, oxygen toxicity, which can damage many parts of your body. Also, when you dive down, the air in your lungs compresses. So if you go back up while holding your breath, you could get seriously injured and may be killed because the expanding air could burst your lungs. That is why the number one rule of scuba diving is to breathe constantly and never hold your breath. When you go down, the air also shrinks because of the pressure. In your ears and mask, you have to wear a mask so you can actually see underwater. So you have to equalize your ears constantly by holding your nose and blowing as well as constantly blowing air into your mask. And you have to do it constantly and continually. Otherwise, you could damage your ears and your mask could hurt your face. The heat or cold might also kill you too. All of the equipment used in scuba diving is very heavy, making it really hard to move. All this would just make Subnautica a lot more complicated and annoying because you couldn't go down very deep and couldn't stay underwater very long, unless Altera managed to somehow fix all that as well. There's a few things I'm going to throw in really quickly. First is buoyancy. You have to adjust your buoyancy through your BCD, which stands for Buoyancy Control Device, so you can be neutrally buoyant, which allows you to swim around easily. Also, the wetsuit, a protective layer that keeps you warm. In Subnautica must be really dang good because it gets really cold when you go certain places. It also must protect against heat somehow since it gets really hot as well. Next, let's take a look at the stuff from Subnautica and how realistic it is. The submarines, the Seamoth, Pronsuit, and Cyclops, are for the most part realistic, except for a few things. They can magically create their own oxygen for one, like an oxygen fabricator. I don't know how that's done. Also, the Pronsuit magically creates its own fuel when you are touching the ground. Fabricators. They can create anything if you give them random materials. It probably wouldn't look like it does in Subnautica if it were actually a real thing in the future, and it probably would take a lot longer to make things. Also, some other equipment like the Stasis Rifle and Propulsion Cannon are a little futuristic, and the Builder Tool also can magically create habitats from materials. Also, the bases make their own oxygen too, somehow. Aliens and Animals. The aliens and their technology are a little far-fetched, but there definitely could be life out there. But the aliens died, which could hint to a few things. The Fermi Paradox asks if there are so many planets out there where aliens could be, why haven't aliens shown up yet? Its solutions are kind of scary, but I'll cover that in a later video. The other life forms in Subnautica are kind of realistic. They're kind of far-fetched in some ways. They were, of course, made up. The Leviathans is where it gets kind of weird. How did Leviathans survive and stay so large with a little food in Subnautica? 
It's a small crater and there isn't much food to eat, so in real life, a lot of them would die. Also, in real life, you'd be absolutely terrified of all the leviathans in Subnautica. I personally wouldn't want to go outside my own life pod. The fear factor would be a lot higher, and if you get eaten, well, you're dead. You can't respawn. I don't know if I could handle that. I know it kind of seems like I'm saying Subnautica is trash because it isn't realistic. Believe me, it's not. It's probably the best game I've ever played and definitely my favorite game ever. It's so fun and terrifying at the same time. Please check it out. Also check out the sequel, Subnautica Below Zero. I will put playlists for both of my gameplay series I have for both of those games in the description. Also, at the start, I know I kind of sounded like scuba diving isn't fun either. Also believe me, it's really fun. You should try it out if you can. Comment below if you think I missed anything. Honestly, there's probably a lot because there's so many parts of Subnautica. Thank you guys for watching. Please like and subscribe so we can hit 200 subscribers fast. And please check out my other content. I have lots of Subnautica theory videos, Subnautica glitch videos, and the gameplay videos I talked about. Also, if you have any questions or video ideas, please let me know by commenting as well. Check out my Discord server, the link is in the description. Also, I know it's kind of early for this, but please support me on Patreon. The link is in the description as well, and I will see you guys in the next video.